inferences come about as a result of reading a text, noting specific details, putting those details together to achieve a new understanding. In other words, inferences are not created in a vacuum. This is important because I believe many students attempt to make an inference and then go find the supporting evidence, and that's backwards. The way the reading process works is you first look at the relevant details, list those specific textual details to figure out what they mean, the answer to the question, the inference. Now, there's a whole lot of magic that happens between here and here, and I think we need to break it down into five explicit instructional steps for our students. Read the text and, of course, ask the question, make sure they understand it. But then they need to list the relevant or related details, the details from the text that would help them to make the inference eventually. That step three is huge. That then they need to think about what they mean, the patterns, the relationships, how they go together. It's this thinking in step four that ultimately leads them to the inference. Okay, let me walk you through an example, but first, a disclaimer. The text I'm gonna reveal is easy, it's simple, and I'm doing that on purpose. You have to teach them these five steps, this strategy with simple text first. Do it with simple text to teach the strategy so that when you raise the text complexity, they then have a very strong and comfortable five-step process to fall back on. So I'm gonna make up a simple audio text. Here it is. Imagine a half a dozen students standing at the end of the street. It's a dark morning at seven o'clock. The students are huddled together. Several are hugging themselves. Others are jumping up and down. And still others are rubbing their hands together and huffing on them. <sighs> when the bus arrives, one student hollers, bus, and all of the students run to get on the vehicle. Okay, so that's the text. Step one, read the text. We did that, check that off. Step two is ask and understand the question. So here's my question. What season does this scene take place in? Now, I know, winter. You just did what all the students do. You did step one, two, and jump to five. Step one, read the text. Step two, understand the question. Step five, what does it mean? What's the inference? You did one, two, Five, it's easy to make the inference when you have background knowledge. And it's easy to make the inference when the text is simple. I'm using simple text because I want to slow down steps three and four. That's where the magic happens. That is how you teach kids to make an inference. So let's do this again. So with the question, what season does this scene take place in? We need to think what are the relevant details? And I have fallen in love with the process that Roz Linder in her book, Chart Sense, outlines for us. Within this resource, Roz suggests the concept of a silhouette. She suggests that students need to first collect the details from the text that are relevant and then think about what they mean in order to generate an inference. That is step three. What are the relevant details? The details that in this question have anything to do with season, temperature, weather, anything that would give us a clue as to what season is this? Collecting the relevant details is what's gonna go outside the silhouette. So recalling my little audio example there, you might be thinking kids were jumping up and down. So I'll jot that, jumping up and down, huffing on their hands. I'll make a note of that related detail. Some said kids were hugging themselves, And so that was, was useful, and, and so we jot it. It's a related detail. What else might be related? 7 a.m. and dark 
outside. Here's another one. They ran to the bus when they saw it turning down the street. Now, keep in mind, step three is listing the relevant details. Oh, there were other details, like there were a half a dozen kids, and one kid hollered that the bus was coming. But some of these details aren't relevant to the question, what season is it? So we have to really work on helping students determine important from unimportant information. This then leads us to step four, where we need to teach students to look for patterns, for relationships, for what these details have in common. I'll tell you a secret. You don't go from these details to bam, an inference right in the middle. It doesn't work like that. You're gonna ask them to put clues together. What does it mean when you jump up and down? Well, now wait a minute. That detail alone might mean they have to go to the bathroom. But when you put jumping up and down with rubbing and huffing on their hands, they're moving around, right? They're trying to, to create some heat is what we realize. But all I know right now is they're moving around. They're hugging themselves. So they're, they're, they're trying to keep warm. That's a little what I would call mini inference. It's dark at seven. Now it's not dark at seven in the summer, but it's dark at seven in the winter. And so I'm starting to think it's winter and they ran to the bus. Yeah, cause they're cold, cause they're trying to keep warm. And that's why they're moving around. What's the answer? What's the inference? It's winter. There it was, determine what it means. Step five, it's winter. That step three and step four are the critical steps. We've got to get kids to slow down. Think about the important, relevant, related details around the silhouette. Capture those. They're explicit. They're literally in the text. List them. Then ponder what they mean. Look for many connections, many inferences. And those are what create the aha inference in the middle, the eventual answer to the question.